Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Strength Students Podcast. I'm your co-host, Steve Carding. And I'm your other co-host, Nick Scopoletti. And we are here today talking about muscle contractions. Mm. Today's episode is going to be about muscle contractions, how to train those muscle contractions, and what those muscle contractions do. And disease contractions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't get those. <laughs> Uh, so how's it going, man? How's training? How's life? How are things? Life's good. Uh, Any the gym, updates? The gym I just started working at burned down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. There was a fire. So I'm uh, currently unemployed, I guess, until a couple days from now. But everything's going good, man. Moved into Hartford. Training's good. Life's good. Dope. It's awesome. Good shit. Happy. Nice. Yeah, my training's going well, too. Just started an eight-week weightlifting cycle. So taking a, a little, cycle. yeah, exactly. <laughs> taking a little break from CrossFit for the next couple of weeks here. There's a, a Connecticut weightlifting meet, uh, CT States at Trinity College. I signed up for it. Super fun. So I'm doing an eight week, uh, eight week lifting cycle, which I haven't done in a while. So pumped to uh, pumped to see how that goes. How'd everything feel today? Good. I mean, it was lower percentages, some complexes. So nailing some positions down and shit, which mm-hmm. we'll actually, ironically enough, talk about today. Ooh. Talk about getting some positions down. Doggy style, missionary, you know, <laughs> the whole deal. All of them. All two of them. Let's get this thing started with some dad jokes, man. Here we go. <laughs> Week two of dad jokes. Mm. Yeah, man. So uh, Please why- <laughs> write in and, and protest this if you really hate <laughs> them, because there's nothing I could do to stop them. All right, so first dad joke of the day. First one. Why don't skeletons ever go trick-or-treating? Why? Because they have no body to go with. <laughs> yeah, let that one soak in real quick. <laughs> Second dad joke. Yeah, I got two again. That's right. Awesome. Yeah, man, I just I wouldn't buy anything that's made of Velcro. Why is that? It's a total ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, put those in your pocket, fans. Mm, don't, don't. <laughs> Just throw them out. Nothing like getting the show started with a good dad joke. Uh, announcements here, guys. Make sure you go subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go like our Facebook page. Go follow us on Instagram and to our cars. Uh, at Strength Students Podcast. Everything across the board is at Strength Students Podcast. Uh, make sure you go give us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Go ahead. Uh, you know, give us a follow on there. Go ahead and subscribe to our podcast because it's a pretty good podcast. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> if I must say so myself. Uh, go check out our YouTube page, what we're going to be putting up on YouTube and, and what's going to be up by the time this episode is out. Uh, is a video on training the three muscle contractions and kind of talking about what the three muscle contractions are and uh, a little more on, on that as well and how to train them. So if you're listening to this episode, make sure you also go to our YouTube channel and check out the video that goes with the episode. So yes. It's good shit. It's good information. Yes. Uh, also, last announcement here, we have some big, big changes coming up. And when I mean big, I mean big. Sex changes. As big as you could possibly get with changes. So <laughs> stay tuned. We're going to be teasing that a little more. We know you guys like to get teased. <laughs> so we're going to tease you up for a little all, more. From all your letters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big changes coming up. Stay focused up. All right. Let's, uh, let's slide into some DMs here and send some news. <laughs> <laughs> So this yes. week's this week's news that we're going to send to you guys, send in our news. Uh, one of the big stories that's uh, started kind of at the end of the summer, last couple of months here, it's been kind of circulating a little bit, is, is coconut oil. What's going on with coconut oil, right? Everyone's in panic mode about coconut oil. <laughs> Stop eating coconut oil. It's bad for you. It kills you. So the uh, American Heart Association came out with a paper, basically... I don't want to say demonizing because that's not really what the paper did, but the perception of the paper has been demonizing coconut oil. Essentially, the age, uh, American Heart Association came out with paper uh, saying, just kind of furthering their stance on saturated fats, saying how saturated fats or you know high amounts are going to lead to 
uh, cancer and heart disease and things like that, which you know is, is still a still a highly debated topic, um, not only in the fitness world but in the health world and you know the strength and conditioning world as well. But um, the paper essentially come came out saying, hey, based off of all the research we've done over the past, you know, since the fifties, essentially, um, we're saying that high amounts of saturated fat are bad, and coconut oil is one of the big ones on there. Um, and essentially what happened was there's a whole craze and now everyone thinks coconut oil is bad for you and don't eat coconut oil anymore because it'll kill you. And what we're here to tell you is don't go crazy. <laughs> don't go throwing <laughs> out your coconut oil yet. Uh, essentially essentially what the paper is saying is don't go crazy with coconut oil, yeah. which what we say all the time in the show is people like to do, right? So if you're, if you're eating a shit ton of coconut oil every day, you should probably heed this advice, right? But... Uh, we're going to link the two articles. I have two articles, actually, I'm going to link for you guys on our sh- uh, show notes. Uh, one is the actual paper that the AHA came out with, so you could look through that. And then the other article is a, a, a good article I found explaining what the paper is saying, essentially. Right. So I'll give an example. In the paper that the American Heart Association put out about saturated fats, they give an example of uh, a, uh, a, a doctor who, uh, I think she was a... I don't know if she's a naturopath or an RD, I forget. But essentially, she did some studies with saturated fats, mm-hmm. uh, specifically MCT oil, which is essentially what comes out of coconut oil. Yeah. And uh, she did a lot of uh, a long-term study on the effects of saturated pa- fat on a certain amount of people. And what she found was, yes, a lot of coconut oil is bad for you if you eat a shit ton of it. Yeah. And a shit much? ton of it being... <laughs> She said upwards of 150 grams per day, which is 10 tablespoons of coconut oil per day. So let that sink in. <laughs> yeah, let's let's let that. So for those of you using like a tablespoon to cook your eggs with it every morning, maybe don't worry about it. <laughs> if you guys, maybe don't worry. If some of you out there are eating 10 tablespoons of coconut oil a day, you should probably pay attention to this stuff. But more of the story being. The paper came out, everyone freaked out saying you shouldn't eat coconut oil anymore, but the basis of the of the paper is essentially saying like just don't go crazy with this shit. Don't be eating these high amounts of saturated fats and coconut oil. Fucking oils. 10 tablespoons. Which is, which is just like anything. You do too much of something, it's not going to be ten. A good thing. That's too much. <laughs> All right guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we are going to talk about uh, your three different muscle contractions and how to train them. Mm. Be right back. Mm. Want more of the Strength Students podcast? Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome. Part two here Mm. on the three types of muscle contractions and why you need to train them. Okay, so we're here to tell you about, first, what are the three muscle contractions? So we're going to go through those three contractions. The three essentially phases of what each muscle goes through during a lift or a movement or an exercise, whatever, what have you. Uh, the benefits of each, why you would train each specifically, and then what to watch for, right? So obviously there are benefits to each, but there's also going to be, uh, we don't want to call them drawbacks, but just things to watch out for when you're training there's always These certain could movements. be too much of a good thing. Just too like much of a good thing, oil. just like fucking 10 tablespoons of coconut oil. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... The three types of muscle contractions are, number one, the eccentric phase, number two, the isometri- isometric phase, and three, the concentric phase. So eccentric, isometric, and concentric. Those and, are the three the phases phase of your you muscle. And in college. Exactly. That phase with guys. Experimental phase. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Nick, the eccentric phase. Let's give a little... Give a little uh, well, tidbit on that. What is that? Eccentric what is the eccentric phase? phase? Is usually when the muscle is being lengthened. It's not usually. It is when the muscle is being lengthened, um, or any lowering portion. Think of a lift. Most likely is the eccentric phase. Mm. Yeah. So, like in a back squat, if on you're going down. down, right? So if you have the bar on your back, and you're when you're lowering the bar down, you're squatting down, that's the eccentric phase, right? Or even bench press, lowering the bar to your chest. Yeah. Or a pull-up when you're lowering, lowering yourself down. Lowering yourself down, down exactly, bar. right? Think about it when, uh, so, or even if like you're doing a bicep curl, when your arm is coming down and that bicep is getting longer and your arm is becoming longer, right? So that's yeah. that eccentric phase, right? Mm-hmm. So that's eccentric phase. We could kind of call that on the way down, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, isometric phase, what is that? 
That is holding a certain position for usually a uh, extended period of time. Or whatever. Yeah, it could be a second, could be two seconds, could be thirty-five seconds, whatever. Right. Um, so holding exactly holding holding a muscle at a certain length. When I so think holding that tension. When I think I was best. I just think of like gymnastics. Yeah, holding like a hollow plank position or holding a you know all that stuff. That is exactly. Like a plank is an isometric hold. That's why those fuckers are so strong. Right. <laughs> Hollow hold, that's an isometric hold. But it's not just those specific movements. You can, there can be an isometric oh, hold within a, a movement, right? So, a, yeah. Exactly. So if we go back to the example of a squat, an isometric hold in a squat would be holding the squat at the bottom, right? So yeah. you go into the eccentric portion, lower the squat down. The isometric portion, the isometric phase would be you holding the bottom of that squat, essentially. Yeah. That would be the isometric and e- phase. Even for pull, you know, again, the pull up is a good example of uh, how you could train isometrics too. Like, as opposed to just going and banging out pull ups, like, what about holding yourself at the top position or holding right, exactly. yourself in the middle position? Or for some people, a push up, uh, if they can't, or a push up, a pull up, if they can't do a pull up, they're just asked to hang from the bar for a certain amount of time. Right. Just getting used to that, I guess, time under tension, right? Yeah. So. Which would be an isometric. Yeah. Hold. Just literally hop on the bar, hold it for 30 seconds. Yeah, which we'll talk about time under tension a little more in our uh, our next segment here, our next step here. But, uh, yeah, that would be the isometric part, the holding of a lift or holding of a certain position, right? Holding the certain uh, muscle length for a certain amount of time. And then you have the last phase, which is the concentric phase, right? So what is that phase? That's the – just like think of it, so concentric contraction, right? It's the part where you are usually shortening the muscle. So you are going through a muscle contraction, you know, the lowering, the eccentric, and the iso, then you're contracting. So that's how I think it can set. That's how I remembered it for anatomy class. Anyway. Yeah, <laughs> word, word. Or for ex phys class. No, that's, that's a good way to remember it. And it's just, if we're going back to our examples before, in a squat, the concentric phase would be standing the squat up. Yeah. Right? Or in a bench, it would be uh, raising the bar up off your chest or pushing the bar up off your chest. Uh, or in a pull-up, it would be you pulling yourself up over the bar. Right? right. So we have our eccentric phase, which is the lowering or the lengthening of your muscles. Yeah. You have the isometric phase, which is the holding of a certain muscle length or holding the certain position or holding the squat at the bottom or holding the bench at the bottom or holding a pull-up at the top. And then the concentric phase, which is the uh, shortening of the muscle, which is in a squat, you're standing the squat yeah. up. In a bench press, pressing the bar out. Overhead press, you're pressing the bar overhead. That would be the concentric part, right? The way I, the, the simple part I like to think of it, the, the simple way I like to think of it is the eccentric part is the lowering part, the isometric part is the holding part, and the concentric part is the explosion part. I always think of it as the explosion part. That's when you're yeah. standing up from the squat or pressing the bar up off your chest in a bench, right? So benefits. So so now that we've kind of got it out of the way of what each of these phases are, what are the, what are the benefits of each, right? So... Let's, let's start with the eccentric. What would be the benefit to focusing on uh, the eccentric portion of a lift? Um, eccentrics have, a, I think, a, they have a pretty wide variety of uh, uses. <laughs> They're used for strength, for central nervous system, building connective tissue as well. And they're also used for just straight-up hypertrophy and building muscle. That is um, a good part to touch on here, I think, with eccentrics is, you know, when you work out, you're not building anything. You don't build muscle working out. Right. Right. You're breaking it down. You break that shit down. So uh, an eccentric portion, that is the damaging, I'm quoting, that's the part that damages your muscle fibers, right? It needs to be rebuilt. Um, it's like, it's, you, you could look at it as the hardest part of a lift. The hardest phase of a lift is the eccentric. Yeah. It could be the isometric, but for the most part, uh, that's like you said, it's going to break Lowering, shit down the yeah, most. Yeah, break shit down. Like taking... You know, when most people start working out, they just start, you're just going to move. Like, I, you know, tempo is a thing that's kind of, um, it's not in so much. They just go, 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 reps, 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 right? Um, but when you start to slow things down, it, it's just completely different. It has eccentric, you see eccentrics used in, in like bodybuilding programs like Ben Pekluski, if you guys are familiar with MI40. MI40, I used to do that you know, shit. Four sets of eight. Um, four second eccentrics, right? Usually, there, yeah. There's usually like a four to six section second eccentric, and for everything, and and usually like a hold at the bottom too. Yeah. But it, the main focus was the eccentric, and yeah. it's kind of the alternative to uh, hypertrophy training, so bodybuilding training, yeah. the, the classic high volume training, right? Right. 
So hypertrophy training being, all right, hypertrophy, I'm trying to make my muscles bigger, essentially, right? That's hypertrophy training. Um, conventionally, bodybuilding, hypertrophy training is like high volume. So you're doing yeah. like sets of 20, sets of 15, sets of 30 even, right? Mm. So now this, especially the past couple of years, and Ben Pekluski made popular with MI40, was eccentric training, right? So no, 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 forget the high volume. Forget 20 reps to... to yeah. um, to uh, spark hypertrophy in your muscles, focus on the eccentric part, the most damaging part of the lift, which is yeah. the lowering or the eccentric part, which is the hardest part. Make it like eight reps and just focus on, you know, rather than just letting the bar drop or going through it quickly, right. slowly control and let that muscle lengthen all the way. Yeah. This and is that's a, this going. Is a, this is a program he like developed. He has his master's in kinesiology. The guy's a brilliant guy. Dude, go to his, go to his YouTube page, Ben Pekluski. Look at oh, all his videos. Man. It's him like hooked up to machines with like 10 scientists. <laughs> if you watch uh, in, yeah. uh, what's it called? What's, what was the new, uh, Generation Iron. Yes. If you watch him in Generation Iron, all these dudes lifting at gyms, going crazy. Ben Pekluski is in like a lab with, with shit attached to him, him and yeah. like fucking rocket scientists and shit. So he likes that stuff. And like you said, yeah, he's he's got his. You said masters in kinesiology, right? Yeah, from, I believe so. From uh, somewhere in Canada. From somewhere in Canada, yeah. So this dude knows what's up. But, but yeah, he yeah. essentially came up. He not came up with, but in the past couple of years here, made popular eccentric training. Yeah. Uh, Particularly yeah. for hypertrophy in the bodybuilding realm. Yeah, then there's other guys like we'll talk about later, Cal Dietz. That yeah, right, exactly. We'll get we'll get to that. I'm gonna save that. So that would be the benefit of training the eccentric, uh, isometric. What would be the benefits of training isometric? I think one of the biggest things we talked about this off camera. Uh, you see this a good amount in weightlifting and gymnastics, um, establishing positions, right? So training, you know, f to give an example here, like a snatch, right? A barbell snatch. Say you're someone who. Uh, struggles with uh, locking the snatch out at the bottom or um, you just have a, your, your bottom position or your catch position is uh, the weakest part of your lift, right? Or that's the weakness in your lift. What you would, a, ben a benefit to training isometrics would be strengthening in that position, right? So holding the bottom of a snatch or holding the bottom of an overhead squat to, let, to strengthen that position. If you're spending time down there, right? If you're spending time and in that isometric position in the bottom of that squat, you're teaching your body to develop that strong position rather than just bouncing out of it, right? Just, uh, I'm going to go down to a squat quick and stand back up. You're sitting down into that squat or you're sitting down into that position for an extended period of time and training that position, building the strength in that position in the bottom. So that'd be the benefit of training in isometric yeah, position. And I always, you know, I always, like I said earlier, I always look to gymnasts like... <coughs> Especially most, ma I mean, any gymnast, but I, I'll use the example of a male gymnast. I know kids I, I went to college with that never bench press in their life. They're 150 pound gymnasts, right? Shredded. They've been holding these positions since they were four, like learning their body weight, how to hold a proper position, how to hold a hollow hold, right? First time they ever get on a bench press in their life, they bench press double body weight. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like, and that I know personally, and maybe I think Steve would agree with me, is that's something. I think we kind of missed <laughs> like guys that oh, yeah. do gym. I would, th I mean, I'll th if I ever have a kid, I'm, they're throwing, they're going right into gymnastics. That was a whole portion of just of development. That is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, creating stability before you could do stuff. So most people, if you don't have that background, that base and you go into doing stuff, that's how you usually get hurt. So, well, if you look at gymnastics, these are some of the strongest people in the world. It's primarily a uh, eccentric isometric sport. Yeah. You know, as far as the movements, and you look at, uh, you know, conversely, a sport like, you know, you and I played football. Yeah. That's pretty much a concentric sport. Yeah, you're just beating the fuck Meaning out of everything <laughs> is just an explosion all the time. You're not really holding too many positions, you know. Unless you're still made block, but. <laughs> nah, I didn't say never. I'm just saying yeah. not, <laughs> not usually holding positions. No, no, it's mainly explosive movements versus moving. weight, uh, ver excuse me, versus like gymnastics, which is a sport where you're holding everything and you're lowering everything, right? Yeah. Uh, and then benefits of concentric training. Talk a little bit about that. Um, so concentric, right? We're talking about actual muscle contraction. And you think like essentially like working on the concentric, you have to do in some lifts, you have to do the eccentric first, right? Mm -hmm. Say a squat, go down, hold in the bottom, that's iso, right? Or you go down, that's eccentric, hold in the bottom, it's iso. Coming up is concentric, right? Usually you can't get one without the other. But doing things like a sled pushes or sled rows are solely concentric. 
or like a pen lay row. I know weightlifters do them a lot. Uh, so a barbell row right from the floor, you're just pulling it up and dropping it down. So you're focusing on the concentric part. There is really, there is a lowering process, I guess, but you're not lowering it under control. You're pretty much dropping it to the floor. Yeah. Um, so that would be, you know, the benefits to that is a lot of power. Um, yeah, power, training, I would say like power and speed development is big with concentric right. training. Like, like a, like a, uh, you know, I'll use Louis Simmons uh, box squats and stuff like that. Yes, there is a eccentric portion of that. Obviously, you're lowering, sitting down to a box. But if you watch those guys, especially on a speed day, they're coming up as fucking hard as they can. It's putting, they're doing 60% of their max. They're putting 100% of their max into the bar every time, right? Yeah. So yeah. you could say that's just focused concentric training, even though it has both and it breaks up the eccentric concentric cycle being on a box squat. But um, it's just one of those things, like just developing power, even on a kettlebell swing. Uh, you could do things like there are dive bomb swings where you're kind of someone is standing in front of you and as you swing up, they're standing there and they push the kettlebell down beneath your legs. It's kind of like you're being forced to hike it behind you as if you were a center in football, right? Word. Um, but you could also focus on the concentric, like lower, yeah, boom, and just worry about driving your hips forward. And Word. that's all you got to worry about. So those, that's what – concentric is a lot of power if you think about it. Yeah. I would say to kind of recap, so if we're talking about the benefits of each – Eccentric training, you're focusing on muscle hypertrophy and muscle building. And central nervous system, too. I don't as well as, yeah, sen- central nervous system, endurance, I would say, we'll too. We'll talk about that later. Under tension, yep. Isometric, which would be building certain positions, right? So building the strength of certain positions. And then concentric uh, is very valuable for building speed and building power, right? Look yeah. at, like, a jump, right? Even, like, a box jump or just a broad jump. That's, it's just concentric, yeah. pretty much. yeah. Uh, it's things to watch out for, right? So, you know, we've kind of listed all these benefits. So it's like, all right, I'm just going to go train eccentrics all the time then, right? Because that's what's going to make my muscle bi- muscles big. Yes and no, right? So you don't, like we said before, theme of the day, don't be eating 10 tablespoons of coconut <laughs> oil, right? Too much of one thing is not a good I'm gonna thing. I'm going to put that so, in my fucking tombstone. So now, yes, eccentric training is, is great for um, building muscle because it breaks down that time under tension, slowly lowering weights whether it be down or, or whichever way the eccentric phase is, the breakdown of muscle and the breakdown of tissue is great for development. However, it's also super taxing on your body, right? So put this thing into phases, man. Like do maybe a couple weeks on, a couple weeks off of eccentric training. Don't, don't do eccentric training all year round because you're yeah. going to fuck yourself up. And super taxing on your body. Usually lower reps with the eccentric stuff. Exactly, yes. Okay, good point. We I think we kind of touched on that, but good point. If you're doing a set of 20, yes, yeah, 20s on the eccentrics. So, you know, the reason why Ben Pekluski picked 8 is because I think so what's I don't know, 4 times 8, the time under tension was scientifically found to be the most beneficial for hypertrophy. So, he's right. looking for time under tension, right? Um, I I could tell a great story about overuse of eccentrics. I had a client once did four sets of 15 reps. Jesus Christmas. Five second eccentrics on chin ups. A week, she was done, gone. Damn. Almost got rhabdo. Damn. She almost got rhabdo from eccentric. She was very close. And the woman, there it is, kids. Don't. And the woman that prescribed it to her as a fitness model. She actually got rhabdo from it and Jesus. was like, "Sorry, don't there do it, it." There it is, man. <laughs> Not too much eccentric, right? And if you if if you do make it a big part of your training, do some on, do some off, man. Do like maybe four weeks on, four weeks off. Don't don't go crazy with eccentrics, okay? Yeah. Not everything and everything and anything could be eccentric because it's going to be super taxing on your body. Even if you want to start with like a body part that's weak, start there. Yeah. I want bigger arms. Do eccentrics there. Then worry about it. Uh, What to watch for with isometric training. Uh, We talked about this a little off camera. Use low percentages, man. Don't try to, for example, (laughs) in the squats squats at 97%. If you're doing pause squats with like 97% of your back squat max (laughs) to try to build that position, you're not going to have a good time. <laughs> if you're trying to you're hold. You're not going to have a good time. If you're trying to hold the bottom of your squat with a barbell on your back for, you know, 5, 10, 15, even 20 seconds, yeah. you're talking low percentages here, right? Keep it in the 60s, even the 50s of percentages of your one at max. So don't go too crazy with the percentages. Same with concentric, right? This might not be a higher percentage lift, right? This is probably going to be a lower percentage. Like if you're doing squat jumps literally with the barbell on your back, and jumping out of that bottom position. Or if you're doing something like weighted box jumps or weighted jumps or uh, just any sort of you're coming fast out of the bottom, you're going to be moving a lower percentage of your 1RM. So don't don't be using your max to do concentric work, right? 
this is to build to make your one RM stronger and right, ma- and right. make you faster, make it more powerful, right? Uh, so keep that a lower percentage. Also with concentrics, the other thing is don't cheat yourself on your range of motion and your technique because you're just you're working against your power there, man. Like if you're doing concentric bench presses and you're just like ripping through them as fast as you can and saying, oh yeah, I'm doing concentric work. Like, nah, man, go all the way. Go all the way down to the bottom of your squat. Go all the way down to your bench. So those those would be the things to watch for in concentric training as well. Unless you have weak points, then well, that's a whole other story. But <laughs> Right. All right, real quick here. We've got a couple minutes. Uh, let's talk about uh, a specific program that we actually came across uh, a little while ago uh, called triphasic training. And this actually is literally dedicated to all three uh, portions of these lists, essentially. Uh, it was created by Cal Dietz. He's uh, Minnesota's strength and conditioning coach. You University can look him of Minnesota. Up. University of Minnesota, sorry. Uh, he, uh, he wrote this book in 2012, so that's when he came out with triphasic training. Uh, and essentially, uh, how it started, uh, the, the story he tells in the book is pretty cool, actually. It started with two shot putters that he was uh, coaching. Both were, like, the same, same size, same, same weights in the gym, except one threw the shot 65 and the other threw the shot 55 feet, feet right? They do feet, right? Yeah. Okay. And so he couldn't figure out why. So he did a bench test um, uh, with a weight, uh, the plate, what the hell is the plate called? Force plate? Force plate, which essentially, just like it sounds, it measures your force. And he put some bands on to, uh, to make sure the, the resistance was consistent. And what he found was that although these dudes had the same one rep max in their bench, the dude who could throw it farther could handle more of the force of the bench coming down to his chest in the eccentric phase than the other sh- uh, mm-hmm. shot putter could. So he could handle the eccentric phase more, the force of the eccentric phase more, than the other lifter. So this is where he developed triphasic training. All right, so go into like the details of triphasic training. So triphasic training, uh, Cal Dietz will tell you this himself. There's a million versions of it. Uh, it's, you know, he's he's even said that, <laughs> he's even said that he's gotten emails from coaches that have used this program and done it a different way, like the way they outlined it. And he's like, oh, I like that better. So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty moldable. But the, the gist of it is you're working on two weeks of the eccentric phase, two weeks of the isometric phase, two weeks of the concentric phase. Now, so it's usually for squats and stuff like that. He, uh, I know it's, he does it with squats mostly. It's a six-second eccentric, so it's five sets of two, I believe. This is one version of it, 80 to 88%. So you're using a good amount of load. Um, so as he said, he's had to train his kids to be very good spotters with the athletes, right? There's, there's no, no fucking around. Um, so it's two weeks of that. I believe it's, um, it's twice a week, five sets of two, 80 to 88%, six second eccentric. Then you come up, right? After that, it is isometrics. It's holding down again. I'm just going to use a squat cause it's easy to use Uh squat being down the hole, holding it for three seconds and then coming up. Okay. That's two weeks of that. And then the last is just normal reps, um, just working on the explosive part. There's no really tempo. You just go down and up and come up fast. And Concentric, uh, yeah. Yeah, concentric, concentric just coming part. up fast. Yeah. And uh, he, he's, he's personally one story that I like is that, you know, he shows he wanted he, – he tested it out. And he even said he had to break some eggs to, you know, figure out what, what worked and what didn't. But one story I really love was a guy who um, had like a 315 bench press or something like that. And they're like, all right, well, you know, they just threw out the bench. You're not benching for these next, you know, six weeks. We're just going to focus on squats and the big lifts, right? So he did, he did triphasic. He did isometric for two weeks. He did or, um, eccentric for two weeks, did isometric for two weeks, then concentric. When he came back to retest his bench, his bench went up like 35 pounds. Shit. That's just, you know, eccentrics and especially in a big movement like a squat is just going to it's going to benefit you. And they didn't even do the movement, right? They didn't bench like, the whole time. They didn't bench the entire time. Say for the the whole that training cycle, they did not touch the bench press, but he got so efficient at being able to lower weights, being able to hold positions and being able to be explosive mm. that his lifts went up anyways. And that's what what we mentioned at the beginning of um, you know, when we started talking about triphasic here, that's what he first found out with those two shot putters was right. the dude who could throw the shot farther 
uh, he could, during that banded bench press test, could handle the velocity, could handle the speed of the eccentric coming down to his chest. He could handle that and um, what was oh, the word? And, and could redistribute that force Recoil, going back up. Like yeah, exactly. how fast he could can redistribute bang, bang. that force going back up better than the other lifter could in the eccentric portion. So that's kind right. of where he found that from. But also notice what we talked about before. Caldeet's program, two weeks at a time each, right? You're not, we're not doing eccentrics for a month. Five even. sets of two. Five two. sets of two. Yep. Two reps. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what are, do you remember the specifics of volume and intensity for? No, they vary. It's, uh, if you got to read the book, it's a lot. I have like a PowerPoint printout of how yeah, he programs it's, it's it. It's very complex. If you don't, if you're not, you know, if you don't know strength and conditioning or you never programmed before it, you look at it and it's like, oh my God, there's like so many colors and different lifts and th- it's just, it's a lot. Yeah. Um, but then we just wanted to lightly touch it, braze over it. Yeah. Not, yeah. Not get too deep, but he, he uses all these and he's one of the guys that's very well known for it. So that's why we wanted to mention triphasic. Yeah. Um, and like we were saying before, and I was, I was kind of saying about the two weeks at a time, right? So the eccentric phase, you're, he, he has you working two weeks at a time. Isometric phase, two weeks at a time. Concentric phase, two weeks at a time. You're not doing a month of eccentrics. You know? you're not, no. And then followed by a month of isometrics. That's way too much. And you're, you got to understand, too, there. he trains Division One athletes of every yeah, exactly. sport, every single sport. So they are athletes first. So this is like he does this in the off season. Like, they're not in competition doing eccentrics at 88, 80 to 88%. Exactly. This is something to help throughout the year. He has to program for a long time. You right. Know, they have to be able to do their sport. Exactly. So. But as it pertains to, you know, the, the everyday strength athlete, uh, those are the three types of muscle contractions. Those are the three phases that are it, – it's important to hit them all. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I guess depending on your sport as well. If you have a sport that's primarily concentric, then you're probably going to spend a lot of time in that phase. Yeah. Um, if you're in a sport that's primarily eccentric or isometric, again, you're probably going to spend a lot of time in those phases. But the benefits of working on each of those, right? The benefits of, of strengthening uh, positions like bottoms of positions or just static positions with isometric phase or uh, building muscle, building endurance, and also building, um, like you said, building the endurance of your CNS. Yes. Yeah. With the eccentric phase or building straight up, focusing on working on either speed, power, or both, developing that explosion with the concentric phase. Right. All right. So that's, those would be, those are the three muscle contractions that your muscle goes through, through different lifts, and the benefits of why you would work on each. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's it for um, our three muscle contractions and why you need to train them. And uh, we're going to take a quick break. We come back, we're going to close you guys out, wrap it up. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Want more of the Strength Students Podcast? Go check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Also, make sure you leave us a five-star review on iTunes and on Stitcher. Stitcher, I just met her. Welcome back, everybody. Strength Students Podcast. Hi. Hope hope you enjoyed our uh, three muscle contractions, what those phases are, benefits of them, and how to train them. Uh, we're going to close it out here with a closing segment that we call our fall comebacks, baby. <laughs> Falls back, and that means a lot of things are coming back into our lives. <laughs> so our top five, we're going to do our, we're going to do each, our, each, each of our top five fall comebacks this year. Nick, why don't we start with you, man? What are your top five fall comebacks? Number one, leggings. Mm, those are back. I love them. Not a bad thing. On guy, I mean, yeah. <laughs> On girls, love on anyone. Them. Love the leggings. I remember when they first came out in high school. Yeah, I remember, great remember time. like sophomore, junior year, they all like start wearing leggings. Leggings and Uggs. <sighs> oh, I think that's still a thing though. Yeah. No, now it's more. Honestly, I've noticed it's more leggings and those like duck boots from the nineties. Those are mm, back. Okay, I'm adding that to yours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I going again now? Oh yeah. Oh, you <laughs> do all five all. of them. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't know if we're going one for one. All right, number two. Patagonia's <laughs> oh shit and North Face they're back in they're back way. everyone loves them I'm literally I could just see like a girl wearing leggings and Uggs and a North Face like they, that was like that was the outfit mm. back in the day it's coming back dude North Face has a lockdown on the jacket game <laughs> I feel like you don't see as much Patagonia 
Only, in the, only in the wealthier areas. Yeah, true. <laughs> North Face has that shit locked down. Yeah, like the wealthier parts, they wear Patagonia. North Face just sounds freezing cold. <laughs> the name North Face just sounds <laughs> disgustingly cold. King of the North. <laughs> Third. It's big. Cuffing season. Cuffing season. This is the time where maybe you've been hooking up all summer and you haven't met the right guy or girl. It's time to settle down, folks. Yeah. <laughs> now it's getting cold. You got your fleece blanket out. You're watching Netflix. You don't want to go to the bar as much. You want someone there. Cuff your chick. Cuff, yeah, cuff your <laughs> chick or guy, whatever you're into. Lock it down. Also, this kind of could go hand in hand. Cuffing season leading into bulking season, oh. a.k.a. gaining relationship weight. Oh, shit. Right? Bulking is a big one, man. You were all Those do go hand in hand, huh? Right? Interesting. Like, oh, I got someone now. They like me. We're in love. Time to bulk. Yeah. <laughs> Time to gain that weight, baby. I could eat cookies now. It's okay. <laughs> like, they're still going to love me anyways. Plus, you're wearing all those clothes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no one really knows. Extra insulation. It's all good. Then you got the leggings. It all comes together. The it's leggings mush everything together. Oh, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Last but not least, it's even scarier than being in a relationship. Haunted hayrides. <laughs> <laughs> Terrifying. I love haunted hayrides. I'm scared, though. Like They have like that dude revving the chainsaw with no blade on yeah, it. Yeah, man. They get real with that shit. I hate that shit. That's messed up, man. <sighs> all right. My uh, top five fall comebacks. My number, my number one fall comeback. Uh, people complaining about being cold. Uh <laughs> Right after people were just complaining about it being too hot. <laughs> now it's too cold. Right? No one could be happy in the Northeast. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Thanks, Obama, for making it too cold. <laughs> Why do we have to have fall? Global warming. <laughs> uh, my number two fall comeback is pumpkin spice lattes. <laughs> I think that's a, f- a crowd favorite, even though I've never had one. I'm going to make it my mission this year to actually try one. Let's see if I turn into a 16-year-old white girl. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Uh, my number three fall comeback is uh, girls saying I love fall. <laughs> Just a general blanket statement. Every girl saying, oh, my God, I love fall. Fall's my favorite. All of a sudden, it's everyone's favorite. Can't fucking- wait for Christmas music. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, my God, I love fall. <laughs> uh, my number four fall comeback is Halloween. Halloween has come back, guys. It's here. Every year. See some pumpkins out. Shit's ready to go. Sarah and I are going to do some like pumpkins with strobe lights in them, I think. Who's some Sarah? LED lights. Uh, my girl, who that's, I live with. That's Steve's girlfriend. <laughs> we have a little, uh, um, what would you call like Not mesh. What was the fucking... He's, a, he's like a little model dog that we have out in the front of our, in the front of our <laughs> house. Scares the fuck Scares out of the me. shit out of Every everyone. time I go. But we're going to put him in a little red tutu with red devil ears. Give him a little costume. Oh, Jesus Christ. And I think Sarah and I are going to be Rick and Morty this year. Oh my god! I think that's gonna be our Halloween costume. Yes. So Halloween is back, and my number five fall comeback is football. Good old fashioned football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. An American staple. Very controversial right now. Everyone's taking a knee. Everyone's, you know, a lot of eyes on football players right now, man. Everybody's, taking some heat, but everybody's freaking out. Yeah, everyone's freaking out. But football is back in a big way. It's gonna be a good season. Week three was crazy. A lot of big plays. Giants are on four. Happened. Giants are on four. <laughs> My Killing team, the Vikings, it. are two and two now, I believe. Although I've I've found as I'm getting older, I'm caring more about fantasy football than my favorite team because <laughs> they also suck. So, so yeah, those are my top five. Those are our top five fall comebacks. Uh, if you guys have any awesome fall comebacks, you guys, you have your top five. Send them in, man. Send them email. Send them Instagram. We'll we'll repost, share them on our social media. So send those bad boys in. Uh, anything else, man? Shall we wrap it up? Let's wrap it. Let's wrap it up, man. This one's done. Put a fork in it. Uh, Thank you for listening, guys. We really appreciate every listen, every download, every view on our uh, YouTube videos, every like on Instagram, man. We appreciate it all. Thank you guys so much. Uh, We love your feedback too, man. Keep giving us feedback, sending us feedback, uh, what you want to see, what you don't want to see. Uh, whose face you don't you do want to see? Whose face you don't want to see? Want Steve off the show? <laughs> Let us know. We can make that happen. Uh, make sure you guys go like, uh, follow, and subscribe. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Go check all that out at Strength Students Podcast, and uh, go check us out on iTunes and Stitcher because that's where our show lies, pretty much. Uh, and make sure you leave us a five star review. All right, guys. Thank you so much. That's going to wrap it up. Hope Later. you enjoyed, and we will see you next episode. Bye. Deuces. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs>